this is the sports cam that's arrived. You can see it's uh, arrived firstly in a plastic bag, and then, unlike anything else I've seen, it comes with its own nice carrier bag, which is really quite smart, protected, neoprene and protected, and a little carry handle there. So that's quite a good first impression. Let's have a quick look inside. I've not opened it up yet. And let's see what we got. Okay, so first things first, we've got our instructions. Um, we'll have a look at them later. This diagram is showing you how to use all the accessories. Yeah, that's a reasonable set of instructions. Accessories, I'll put them on the side to start with, and we'll have a look at them individually. Okay, quite a few accessories, as you'd expect. Uh, yeah, and then in here, at the back, we've also got. Okay, I'll take everything out, and we'll have a look. Okay, and then the camera itself. Alright, so the camera comes with its own um, mount there on the bottom and it's in its own waterproof case. We'll have a look at that in a second once we've had a look at the accessories, see what we've got. So we start off with some sticky pads and a wire cable connector for um, connecting to whatever you feel like you want to with sticky pads obviously. Okay, you get some cable ties, quite useful for making sure things don't fall off. Some Velcro straps, which I'll be using later to attach it to a remote controlled car. Uh, a lens cleaning cloth. Now, probably, if this is anything to go by, the original um, case that it comes in has, is waterproof to 30 meters. But because of that, the, the back door doesn't let in much sound, as you'd expect. So I think this is probably a replacement door for... Um, just general use that's not so waterproof, or might not be waterproof at all, but it lets a lot more sound through. But I will check that in the instructions. You then get your charging cable, and that is a uh, standard micro USB charging cable, which is good. Um, these are clamps to attach to other parts. Both have sticky pads on the bottom, and one has a tripod mount in. You use these. You can attach those to whatever that can kind of tripod, obviously, and then this part of the main body will clip in, clips in like that, and then I have to push it in and slide it in. And I'll do that in a second because I need my hands free. But that slides in there, and then that can be mounted on something. I'll be using this later on my remote control car, so you'll get a better look at that later. Um, this is uh, a bicycle mount or, or something similar, so you release these two clips and that can go around a handlebar or something, anything you like, circular around and about that big it can go around. Um, that's a vertical clamp, similar sort of thing, and it's a rotatable one, so you can rotate it quite happily. That looks like another one, another one of these upright ones. Um, in fact, I might be using that in conjunction with that on my remote control car. So these have holes in them, so you can also put the Velcro straps through those holes, strap that down to something, clip that in there, and then that clips on top of it like that. So that can go onto pretty much anything. That could be surfboards or anything that's got a, that one with anything that's got a tripod mount, but anything that's flat that you want to mount it to, and then have the camera elevated a little bit. Okay, what else do we have? We have a spare battery, a little tiny spare battery, which is good. It means the battery is removable from the camera. Um, that's a housing for your camera that can be attached to a tripod, either top and bottom. Um, not waterproof, it just keeps it firmly in place and it can be used in conjunction with any of the other uh, accessories. A couple more. Um, <coughs> yeah, another regular vertical sort of clip used for pretty much anything. Um, that one, I believe, is a spring loaded clip. If I can get into it. I can't at the moment, I've got fiddly fingers. Here we go. That is a spring-loaded type clip, okay, to clip onto. Whatever you want to clip it onto, anything you have that might clip onto. Okay, we've already seen one of those that's very similar to the originals, um, and that could be mounted onto other accessories, if you like, combined together, um, and that's the same, you combine them together. 
So lots of accessories. The diagrams probably in here show you all the variations, or not all the variations, some of the suggested variations that you can use them for. Um, there you get all your diagrams which show you how you can combine things together. Um, helmets, bicycles, belt clips, but obviously you can attach it to surfboards, uh, remote control cars, which I'm going to do. You could even attach it to your drone. Um, any kind of bicycle you've got, any kind of helmet that you've got, pretty much anything really. Skis, you can mount it to skis. Um, my son's going to go skiing later in the year and he's going to put a tripod mount on his. All right, let's have a look at the camera itself. So normally these things have a, like a push and pull mechanism to open the door. They've obviously got screen protectors on here, which I'll remove all of them. That releases the door. It's not quite tight because it's a vacuum seal. Twist that away and pop the camera out like so. So there's your camera. I'll take that lens protector off. I'll do that in a minute. I'm a bit fiddly. That's your standard camera. You've got your mode button there, which we'll have a play with in a minute. Um, on the side, you've got your um, micro, micro SD card slot. Um, a charging slot and probably a data transfer slot to plug into a computer. At the back you've got your screen, another screen protector there, pop that off. Okay, some LEDs there to give you indications of whether it's on and charging. And on the back there you have an up and down menu and that button there is often used to turn on the Wi-Fi as well. Okay, and on the top you have OK. So I'll start by turning it on by pressing and holding the button on the front. And that's it coming on. Um, you can see the battery's fairly well charged already. They set to a three minute loop recording. You get all the indications and the time is wrong. So to get into different modes, that's video recording mode to start with. I'll bring it a bit closer. That's video recording. Press the button at the front, should take you into photograph mode and you can see that it's 12 megapixels. I've taken no photographs at the moment. Press again and it should take you into preview of your images or videos and obviously I haven't taken any one more time, takes you into your settings. We'll have a look through these and we're going to use the up and down on the right and the OK button on top. So we can start off with resolutions. There's your choices of resolution. You've got Full HD, um, 720W, VGA and VGA. I'm going to have a go with my 60 frames per second on my remote control car, so I'm going to set, select that. Right, you've then got TV out, so you can have that off or on if your TV's, if you're plugging into your TV. Um, on screen display mode, on or off, okay, so that's having things on the screen or not. That's on. Time lapse record, obviously, that lets you create a time lapse between 1, 2, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, and 1 minute. So that's quite useful for obviously for time lapses. I'll turn that off for now. Capture mode, that's either single shot or you can set a timer. Uh, cyclic record, that's quite useful if you're using it for a dash cam in a car. That lets you rotate every three minutes. Um, it'll record a three minute file and it will keep rotating and record another one and then eventually if it runs out it will delete the original ones if your card runs out. Um, HDR, high dynamic, resolu high, high dynamic resolution I think, that's for um, better quality of image. Motion detection, that's I guess is going to be for a parked car kind of thing where it will detect movement Okay, audio, which should be on or off. It's on in this case, that's recording audio. Date stamping, you can have your files date stamped if you want. Okay, and that's on, set to on. Image size, 14 megapixel, 12, 10, and 8. Well, let's put it to 14 just to see what the quality is like. Well, that is pretty high though. Um, quality, that's going to be the quality of your video. Fine, normal, and economy. That's depending on how good you want your, your, your resolution, I guess. Um, sharpness, you've got sharpness control. Normal is average. I've not really played with those, so I wouldn't know that much about them. But you can have strong, normal, or soft. White balance is normally set to auto, but you could if you want daylight, cloudy, indoor tungsten lights, or indoor fluorescent lights. But I'm going to leave that on auto, which is where I normally leave most of my cameras. Uh, color control, color, black and white, or sepia if you really want, I guess. Uh, ISO setting, you've got your ISO settings between auto and 100, 200 and 400. You've got exposure compensation for bright or dim conditions. Anti-shaking, I'm going to put anti-shaking on to reduce jitter, because I'm going to be putting on a remote control car. You've got your language choices, 
date and time setting, which I'll do later. Auto power off. Okay, you can tell it when to turn off after three minutes if it's not being used. Beep sounds. I'm going to turn the beep sounds off. I don't like beep sounds, so that's for the buttons, so I shouldn't get any now. TV mode. NTSC it's set to, but we are PAL in the UK, so I'm going to set it to PAL. Uh, then you've got your screen savers. Uh, sorry, screen savers, which I'm not going to worry about. Frequency, 50 or 60 hertz. You can have it rotate if you want to as you turn the camera. Then you've got your car mode. There's your Wi-Fi SSID. That tells you what you need to look for. I'm going to just go back and use that in a minute. I will connect to my um, phone later. And there's the password, which is normally one two three four five six seven eight. Um, but that yeah, and then that allows you to reset it. And your license number. That's if you are using it for cars, you can set a license number. Um, and you can delete stuff, format cards, which I'll do in a minute. Oh, and return to default settings, and check what version of software or firmware you're running. Which I guess you can do a, an update if you want to. So that's the um, that's the system. I press mode again, hopefully it goes back to record. So I'm going to put an SD card in a second and we'll have a look at some other stuff in a minute. Let's just turn it off with the front button, press and hold, and off it goes. So that's me with a um, 32 gig micro SD card now. I'm going to pop that in. It's a high speed class 10. Should pop into this slot here. Pop and click. I'm lucky. That's clipped in place. So I'll turn it on now and we will format the card. It's always worth formatting cards in the device you're using it on, uh, just as it's compatible. So get to settings again. And hopefully if I go up one, it'll turn me to the sixth. Okay, there we go. And format. Okay. Data will be deleted. Okay. That's it done. <clears throat> and whilst I'm here, I'm going to set the date and time. Okay, and it's 2017. And is that month? Or is that day? It's like that 12, so it's going to be month. And then day, I think it's the 23rd. Might be wrong. 223. And then time is 8.35, and doesn't matter seconds, and we've got years, month, and day, so that's fine, that's me happy with that. Okay, so I'll press that again, and, and turn off. That's card formatted and date set. So if you are wondering what I'm going to test this with, I'm going to use this remote control car here. So I've used one of these standard brackets. Um, I've clipped the extra one into it, and then I will mount the camera on there. I'll show you a video of that in a minute. And I've used the Velcro straps, which are going to go around my car like so. And this car can actually do about 40 kilometers an hour, so this is going to give quite a good test um, of its performance. 